when President Franklin Roosevelt federalized the National Guard in September 1940. The 249th reported to the three Columbia River forts, where they provided support for the 18th Coastal Artillery Regiment as it was transferred. There were several submarine attacks at the mouth of the Columbia River in December 1941. This was the first action seen at this fort since the Civil War. Fort Stevens is now a state park, and it is a trove of textures and interesting structures. Its structures have withstood the passing of time and have developed character to fill your artistic eyes. Utilitarian building materials result in geometric structure that gives depth to images, video, and paintings of the area. The old silent guns bring a feeling of soberness to the fort and truly can be a focal point of images telling the history of the place. It, for me, is impossible to image these guns and not think about the men who manned them in the nation's time of need. The metal parts of the fort give an interesting color rendition with rust giving texture and color to a monotone background. Functional design amazes and makes one wonder if the builders understood the beauty of this place designed for war. The setting for the fort is one of amazing natural beauty and the vistas from a machine gun's nest intertwine with the beauty of nature and as Neil Young would say, the war of man. The shipwreck of the Peter Iredell and Clatsop Spit, while at last, is an amazing opportunity to image the history and the danger of these waters. The fort overlooks the very dangerous Columbia Bar. Pacific storms often take fishing vessels in these waters. Once again, nature and man-made objects make for artful opportunities in the park. Fort Stevens is a several-day adventure and I recommend staying in Astoria and making the short drive each day.